Hi, I'm Tom Lopes, Marshfield's Communications Director, and welcome to my show, Making Connections. And today in the studio, we're going to talk about Walk MS, and that's going to happen on April 27th. That's a Saturday. We're taping this in the month of March, so you should be able to view this throughout the month of April. Please share this uh, so people know more about Walk MS right here in Marshfield in 2019. Well, you may see some individuals here, these three, Betty Volkman here to my left, Lynn Steinmetz in the middle, as well as Crystal Litwitz, I think I pronounced that right. <laughs> she can help you with that. They're going to introduce themselves. They all have MS, they, and, and we're going to learn more about the disease, how it affects them every day, uh, if they've lived with it uh, their whole life. I, we don't know, but we're going to all find out. And uh, we're going to just start off here, Betty, with the event. I want to know a little bit about, again, when it is, and then we'll just kind of go down the road. But but before we do that, feel free to introduce yourself a little bit about you. Okay. Who you are? Uh, my name is Betty Volkman, and I am from Marshfield. I live here. We've lived here about 45 years, and um, like this city very much. I was diagnosed with MS approximately 35 years ago. The actual diagnosis came about 30 years ago. I've been having symptoms for 35 years, not knowing what it was. Um, again, our walk is April 27th, that's a Saturday, and our registration is at 9 a.m., and the walk starts at 10 a.m., and this will happen at the UW Marshfield um, site campus, okay. on the campus, yeah. yes. We have a one, two, or three mile walk. And of course, if you can't make it that far, there's always cutbacks to that. Our main point for this walk is to have awareness of the disease of MS and then support for the teams. We want to grow the teams this year. Um, we found out that someone usually knows someone with MS. Uh, Lynn, let's uh, learn a little bit about yourself. My name is Lynn, Lynn Steinmetz, and we've lived in Marshfield for 30 years. Uh, raised our kids here. It's a beautiful community to, to raise a family. I was diagnosed in 1997. My kids were first and third grade. Uh, it was a very difficult time to realize that I was going to deal with something for the rest of my life. Um, at the time, I didn't know anything about MS. I only knew one person in my life, and that was a high school teacher's wife who ended her life. And so that was all I knew of MS. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, this is, this is awful, this is horrible. Um, once we settled into reality and I learned more about it and I learned that I could live with it, then we learned to deal with it at our house. Um, the, the kids grew up with a a very good understanding of compassion and empathy. Um, my kids now are young adults and I'm so proud of them because they grew up with this and they're like, mom, I can get the door, mom, I can carry the groceries, mom, I can whatever. Um, we have our laughs about it because you have to laugh about things like this or else you'll go crazy. Um, I fall down at home and they're like, oh my gosh, can I help you up? Um, no, first thing is I'm mad. I'm mad when I'm down, don't, don't bother me. I'm really ticked. And so I lay on the kitchen floor and I looked underneath the bookcase that was in the kitchen and I said, somebody needs to sweep <laughs> under that thing. And then, then it was like, okay, laugh, laugh, laugh. So we found things that were humorous to get us through, um, through the things. And uh, mine is relapsing remitting, which means that I will have a relapse that may last anywhere up to a couple of months. And then I will have, go into a remission. But every time you relapse and remit, you don't fully remit. So every time you have a relapse and then you go into remission, you might only regain 90% of your function. And so the goal with relapsing and remitting is to um, take the medications to not have the relapses. And so I take Jelenia, it's an oral medication, and it's so much better than the shots I used to have to do every day. So. All right, thank you. I am Crystal. Hi, um, I'm Crystal Belaitis. Um, I have had MS for 26 years. Um, in, uh, I was 23 years old. I am now 49. Um, so I've had it more than half my life. Um, 
again, like Lynn, um, shocker, um, didn't know enough about it to know anything about it. Um, just had lots of different symptoms, the tingling, the numbness, um, in reality, not to be able to feel something, not be, or feel the tingling. A lot of, a lot of symptoms are the tingling, the numbness, vision. Um, I started out with uh, Bell's palsy on the left side of my face. Um, and then, then I got brought in and said, okay, let's do some more tests um, and found out from an MRI and they did a spinal tap, which is not a fun thing to do, um, and found out the white, the white blood cells were um, too high. So um, they started me off with many different stuff to try to fix it. Um, a lot of things didn't work and I progressively gotten worse. Um, it went from nothing to now I have what's called an AFO. Um, on my uh, leg, on my right leg. Um, it's for drop toe. So it's inside my shoe and it's hard. And so when I walk, I don't, I don't trip. Um, started with the cane. Um, so now I, I don't go anywhere without my cane. Um, and right now I'm doing okay, but I am on a, a new drug. I've been on it for a year and a half. It's all, um, Ocrevus is what mine is called. Um, and it's done every six months. Um, intravenously. Um, there are side effects, but I guess there are side effects to everything. You have to take a chance with your life. Our lives are all different. Our lives are, I mean, each one of us have different symptoms. Each one of mm -hmm. us are dealing with it in a, in a different way. So life goes on with lots of support and the love of family, and that's what I think all of us have. Without them, we wouldn't succeed. And so I'm, I'm okay. We're, we're doing okay. We're doing the best I can. This is called reality. This is called our life. Mm -hmm. We have found out that my MS is not Lynn's MS, is not mm -hmm. Crystal's MS. Mm -hmm. We all have MS, but the symptoms are all different. Mm -hmm. I, too, started out with tingling and numbness, and it went away. They thought it was carpal tunnel. Um, then I started with a little more numbness, and it went away. First, they were looking at Lyme's disease. They were looking at a brain tumor. They were looking, which was all very scary. But when I was diagnosed with MS, I thought, okay, now I can live with this. I can deal okay. with this. And I started out walking just fine. Um, I went to a cane, mm -hmm. and then I went to a walker, and then I progressed into the wheelchair. But the wheelchair isn't all bad. Mm -hmm. It gets me where I want to go. Mm -hmm. We found out we could not stay in our existing house because it had steps. So we had a house built okay. that had zero entry. Mm -hmm. I could roll right in. The house was built for me with adaptations mm -hmm. within the house. And it has worked great. I've been blessed with a wonderful husband as a caregiver. And my faith has gotten me through. Well, thank you for sharing the short stories, and we're going to learn a lot more about it. We'll talk a little bit more. Uh, but I just want to uh, go back to the camera here, and uh, just about the event, I uh, want to make sure everyone knows it's uh, April 27th, uh, 2019, and uh, it's called Walk MS. Uh, they have their shirts here uh, in orange, so, uh, and it's going to be at the UW-Marshfield Wood County campus check-in, 9 a.m., and the walk begins at 10 a.m. It is a walk, and you were saying one to three miles and uh, they raise money for this and that's what's really important here to help uh, help uh, fight this disease this is maybe someday there will be a cure we'll talk about maybe a little bit about what they've heard over the past several years and and there are some uh, some new drugs as you had mentioned so um, there's a, a lot of information on the website we'll display that on the bottom of our screen here so they can find this here you'll be able to see this right now at the bottom of the screen uh, mentioning that uh, where you can find more about the Walk MS and how you can donate as well. Uh, there's uh, going to be stuff in newspapers. Uh, they did put out a press release, so if you can, uh, if you get that, uh, give them a, those guys a call as well. <coughs> I'm going to put a phone number here about Visit Walk MS, and I'll just mention it to you just in case you don't see it on the bottom of the screen. It's 855-372-1331. Again, 855-372-1331. Or uh, there's an email too if you want about red, and this is about registering fundraising support at nmss.org. Again, fundraising support at nms.org. 
and uh, we'll be flashing that on the screen here so you have that. Alrighty, well thanks again for joining us on Making Connections, my program uh, that I have an invite guest in from the area. So if you have uh, want to come on my show, please give me a call, 715-486-2070, ask for Tom, and I'm glad to talk about what you guys have coming up in the program uh, and get the word out for you anytime, give me a ring. Um, let's talk about a little bit more than what you guys gone, have gone through in your in your life, how you deal with this. You have to go to the hospital at times. I'm sure it, it's it's something you can't ignore, and you're telling me it gets worse as well as you go. Um, Betty, you've had it the longest, is that right? 35 that, years ago? That's correct. Um, and that about in the ni early 90s. Is that is correct. So when you, when you were diagnosed, um, you had to go to you know, the doctors, it took them some time, but what have you had to do now between that whole time? Is, is there, it seems like it has progressively gotten worse. Correct. Uh, you're now in a wheelchair, but I guess let's, let's talk about your, your steps uh, to help have a, a normal life. Okay, well, back in the early 80s, um, I ended up walking fine, mm -hmm. and it, progressed, like I said, with Crystal to a cane, and I was, before that, I was on a drug. At that time, there were three drugs available, and I was on an injection, and then um, at that time, the neurologist decided to take me off, and I have not been on a drug since. They do not have anything for my progressive MS. So, um, but... Again, just the positive attitude, trying to eat healthy. Um, I can exercise at home. I have a manual wheelchair that I can mm -hmm. roll, and I try to do a mile in our subdivision mm -hmm. in my manual one okay. about two or three times a week. Now, not yeah. in the winter time, <laughs> but um, now I can try to get out there to keep my upper body. And is there some exercises that like that, uh, other ones that you can do? Uh, I mean, bask I, I, we've seen wheelchair basketball, too. Yes, that I haven't tried. <laughs> I do have TheraBands, stretch bands, that I used for my feet and my arms to keep this. Because, and I try to watch my weight, mm -hmm. because if um, I can pivot on my feet and I have to be able to lift my body, so keeping the upper part of my body strong and my weight down um, helps for me. So you're not able to walk at all? No, right? I cannot not walk. At all. So, no. so you're uh, the caregiver, your husband, yes. is that right? Yes, yes. So it has to help you make food and, and well, you like to make food. <laughs> that, I'm talking about this accessible house. Okay. Um, the house was built that I can reach everything. Mm -hmm. okay. In fact, my kitchen sink is low. Is low. And if he chooses to do <laughs> dishes, <laughs> if, if <laughs> the kitchen sink can come up. Well, that's okay. Um, it's amazing, her house. Amazing. My yeah. oven door does not come down on me. It's in the wall. It opens like a microwave. And it's to your... And it's to my height. Outlets are high enough that I can use. Windows are low so I can see out. Yep. Um, I have a roll-in shower okay. um, that works. Everything in the house works for me, so I am pretty oh, independent. Yeah. Oh, definitely. What about driving? Can you drive? Um, I could, but I chose not to. Okay. I could get hand yeah. um, levers and so forth, yeah, sure. but I have chosen not to. We do have an accessible van that mm -hmm. the ramp comes out, and I drive right in. So that helps a lot. Fun. Let's talk about some of uh, the things that you've gone through as well. And I know you've mentioned quite a few of them here at the beginning of the program. Um, I'm sure there's there's a lot. And you've been living with it now, you said 20? 20, 22 uh, years. 22 years. 22 years. So that would be about 1997. Seven. Yep. And uh, your kids are now gr grown? Grown. And, and they're, are they and gone then? So you don't they're have that? grown and out of the house. One lives here and one lives somewhere else. Um, so but is that harder now? You don't have them as around? No, actually. <laughs> Kids, I love you, but <laughs> it's wonderful when they come home, but it's right. it's not any worse or any better, you know, for me okay. 
life wise. We live in a two story home. We're in a, an old farmhouse. Um, I deal with the stairs, but my husband's just really awesome. He'll, you know, hon, I need you to carry the laundry upstairs, or I need you to carry the laundry downstairs, or the vacuum cleaner, or whatever. I did for a while think that I was going to die by vacuum cleaner on the stairs because I would try, <laughs> and that got a little iffy. Um, mine started during deer hunting season. I can remember the exact day. I had my niece, my nephews at the house overnight with the kids, and they had a sleepover, and I was trying to sew with my sewing machine, and things just didn't, things weren't working right, feeling right. Something was off, so I just went to bed, and when I got up, I had double vision so bad that I had a TV up here and a TV down here in my living room. And uh, so I, I was like, well, like Betty said, is it a tumor? Is it a, you know, an aneurysm? What's going on? What's wrong with me? And of course, hubby's at deer camp, so I had to wait for him to come home. Um, and it took, from that point, it took us probably three or four months to get a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. During that time, the double vision stayed um, with steroids to help tamp it down a little bit, but it caused permanent double vision. So I have, um, to my left and to my right in my periphery, I get double vision when they do the finger thing. When they get about here, I've got two fingers. Um, so it, it causes issues for looking side to side. Um, I'm that driver on the road that takes a little longer at an intersection because I have to consciously look both ways. So if you're behind me and you're mad at me because I'm not moving fast enough, too bad. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I'm not going to jeopardize anybody with this. Um, so most of my issues have been vision and balance. And the relapses that I've had have been the double vision mostly. Um, I was just reading my Facebook timeline and two years ago I had eight weeks of double vision so bad that I couldn't get from the recliner in my house to the couch in my house. It was, it was so bad that I just didn't want to open my eyes. I couldn't ride in a car, I couldn't wash dishes, I couldn't watch TV. The only thing that, the only saving grace was, and this was in my timeline on Facebook, was that I had my iPhone and I could focus on that and connect to the outside world. Otherwise I was stuck in my house and uh, that was a very long eight weeks um, took yeah. a long time for that to go away um, otherwise I've been having a good stretch and I started on injection medications like Betty did but I mine were daily I think you were on the Copaxone too though weren't you Betaseron oh Betaseron they had the ABC drugs they had what was the A1 mm -hmm. Avonex Betaseron and Copaxone so I was given a choice and Copaxone was a daily injection. As to, uh, to illustrate how far they've come with the drugs, when I would get my drugs in 98, I would go to the clinic pharmacy and I would come home with a grocery bag, like so, of stuff. And I'd put it on the counter in the bathroom. And it had a box of syringes, a box of alcohol pads, a box of buffer, and a box of dry reagent, it's called. Um, I'm also a lab technician, so this was no big deal for me. But I would have to draw up buffer in one syringe and inject it into the reagent, and then that would have to sit for 20 minutes or so. So that's when I would take my shower. And then when I got out, use another syringe, draw it up, and inject it. And it was just this whole big thing. You couldn't, um, you had to store it in the refrigerator. So for traveling, you had to make sure that you got some place that had a, either an in-room fridge or you'd have to make arrangements with the kitchen or whatever to store it and it was just, it was very cumbersome. It was just not easy to, to work with. And how long ago did they come up with the, pre, now that's pre-filled syringes, mm -hmm. you get a little box this big and it's got 30 pre-filled syringes in it. And now they've gone to um, oral medications, which is like happy dance, mm -hmm. you know, yay. Because <laughs> yeah. now I can travel, I can take my pills with me and it's once a day, I don't feel any side effects and it's just, it's, it's just really come a long way since the late 90s. Yeah, definitely, and that, and that helps uh, people like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, this block is gonna help, you know, raise money helps with this kind of stuff. Is that, For more, is research, that more research and more drugs. And, and, and because there's no cure, I guess I wanted to talk to you. Uh, you, know, you, you, you have had um, 26. 26 years yeah. of this and uh, you know, all of you are waiting for mm -hmm. a cure. We'd oh. love to have that. Every, yeah. you know, but we don't, there is no one. There and you don't one. know how it starts yeah. either, right? Is that, it's, it's not like you get, like, I'll say, fall down, break a leg, or 
give a tick bite. Yeah. Is that right? They don't Nobody know what causes. What don't. causes it? No, mm. there is no, no, really nothing out there that tells you why it happened. Mm. It just happened. Um, they say it's not hereditary. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, in my family, there is one other person, um, a second cousin that has MS, um, but mm -hmm. we have a very large family, um, and there's only two of us. Um, when I started, uh, I didn't want to be a guinea pig. It, you know, it was just, in 1993, it was the start of, everything was new, you know. Um, Betasteron had just come out, you know, you could give yourself a shot every day, and I'm like, no, that ain't <laughs> happening. Um, I did not want to be a guinea pig. I didn't want to be the first person to have die over a medication. There wasn't enough in it for me. So I did it on my own for years. Um, so that was in 1993, and I had a few episodes, um, did some steroid treatments that seemed to get me through, pushed me through, and then I got pregnant in 1998 with my daughter, um, uh, and it put me in remission. When I got pregnant, it put you in remission. Anything I had went away. So when I had my first daughter, it was like, okay, this is just being pregnant. And then it lasted for about two years afterwards that I had nothing. I was fine. Um, and then the next two years, it went kaput. I had a couple of incidences again. Um, and then I got pregnant again. So there was four years difference. It took it away again. So um, to me, there's something to do with a woman's body, with uh, the hormones. Um, that's been addressed by the doctors before. I have very much told what I thought um, to looking into this as a cure and men can't have it because they're not women they don't have the hormones we do I'm thinking there's something to do with that and so then after I had my second child it did come back I ended up having episodes again um, a few here and there and then it just started to get worse and a little worse and you could tell you're walking my walking well, well, is the one thing the fatigue the fatigue is Horrible. That's killer. It's a killer. Um, so after that, I ended up having to seek more things for help. The AFO, the cane, um, and I decided not to get pregnant again. <laughs> um, after two, that was enough. I think maybe if I would have known what I know now, I might have thought, you know, if it was getting this bad, yeah, let's see, wouldn't this help? No, I wasn't. I wasn't ready to take that. No. So two was enough for me. Um, my children are 20 and 16, and they. Uh, just like like Lynn's children, they have grown up with compassion, respect. Um, yeah. Disabled people are are a gift sometimes, mm -hmm. and they've learned to adjust. They've learned to be respectful, you know. So even though I didn't want them to see mm -hmm. what kind of people we were, that we were a little slower, and we have a disability, and all this other stuff, it really gains attention to your children. They watch you. They mm -hmm. we are their role model per se. Yep. Um, Mom, are you okay? Mom, can I help you there? They have learned a new way to live. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm fortunate for that. Mm -hmm. um, but in the last couple of years, I've tried three different medications now. Um, we had a doctor at the clinic um, that uh, re retired, and somebody had come in and taken his place. And she is more of an aggressive, I think, an MS doctor. She was more into the medications. I want to get these medications um, more into you, let's start, because um, I had never been on a medication before. So this was something new, and that was Paula Aston at the Marshfield um, mm -hmm. Clinic here in Marshfield. Um, excellent neurologist, um, and she brought in the new drugs and started putting me on a couple. So I've been on the Tysabri, been on the Julinia, which Julinia is on. It doesn't work for me. It didn't work. I still ended up getting um, more lesions on my brain is basically... Uh, every time you have an episode, you gain a new lesion on your brain. Once they start interacting with each other, that's where more nerve damage is done. That's how they figure out with the MRIs how many symptoms that you have gone through in your lifetime. That's how they, they figure it out. Um, so the Jolinia, they found I was getting more lesions. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to stop and go on uh, intravenous every six <coughs> months. Um, the, the medications they put you on, they're not cheap. Okay, so everybody needs to know the medications are not, but they work for some, don't work for others. Um, very expensive. The, the Ocravis 
is helping me. All it does is maintain. It is intravenously for four and a half hours. It's maintaining. There is no cure for MS. Um, so we, we hope and pray that someday, if not for us because of their generation we're in and they can't find one, hopefully for the generations to come, I don't want my children to feel okay since mom has got MS. Is this something that I have to look forward to? Is this something that I have to be scared to? Mm -hmm. So that's where, that's where all these funds of these money comes from. You know, it helps fund MS so they can get more medications, new drugs, new, possibly a cure. We don't know if there's one out there or not. We hope to God there will be one one day, if not for us, our children, family, whatever, our friends, but support is number one, let's be honest and open. Mm -hmm. If we don't have the support like the three of us have, and most of the people in our group, and most people that have MS, you need the group support. I have a family that is fantastic. My husband is wonderful. I've been with him for 34 years. He's been with me. My kids are wonderful. I have to have it to survive. And yeah. that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. We have to survive. This is life for us. This is normal for us. Um, Going through uh, MS your whole life, um, have you been able to go on trips and things like that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've been doing some of that. You, it's you, difficult. You, it's, it's a little hard. You know, it's difficult for every one of us. We have to pick and choose what we can and what we can't do. I can't bike. I can't run. Um, I can walk, not very well, and I can only walk 10 minutes, and then I'm, I'm pooped out. I can't do anymore. Um, you almost come to the to the decision is was this really worth it? Mm -hmm. Now now I am so tired I can't move, you know. So you have to be really careful what you can and can't do. Um, but yes, um, I think all of us have been on trips. Um, it's just how and it's a new anxiety. It's a new new anxiety. How are we going to get from point A to point B? Are they going to have handicap accessibility, um, especially for the wheelchair? Um, bathrooms are a big issue for some of the handicapped, especially in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's Betty can tell you more about that, how the issues <laughs> yeah. that she's yes, come across. Yes, I can. Hotel rooms. Yeah. They say the higher the better for the bed. No. <laughs> Not for me. I no. can't transfer you can't, you can't, into it. And up. accessible to someone is not accessible to me. Mm -hmm. We've gone into a, you, do you have an accessible bathroom? Oh yes, okay. You go in the hotel and it's a bathtub. Well, that does not work with me. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a roll-in shower. Right. Um, bathrooms, I can okay. usually not get the door shut. Not that that makes a difference, but it's not accessible. Right. So accessible to some people are not accessible to others. Oh, very, very much so. Um, so but the, the government is getting a little wiser on that. And when people remodel, I would love to go in and say, okay, this is the way. Yeah. But what works for me may not work, may not work right. for somebody else. Right. So we have to be very careful what accessible means. What it means. Let's talk a little bit about as the disease has progresses in your life. And does, does someone, uh, does, does it get so bad that, that someone can pass away from this at all earlier in life? Or is it, can you live all the way to a 98, 95 to 100 years old with this? It depends. You usually, is, it's not a death thing. Um, now, would you, could you pass away from complications if you have a disease? Yes. So a thing will happen. Right. It's an autoimmune disease. Um, and what it does is someone says, well, can you feel your leg? Well, yes, I can feel my leg. They saw my picture and I did feel it. I just can't move them. A message from my brain telling what to me to move this leg if it happens. So the, it's a nerve. So the message from my spinal cord or from my brain telling me to move my leg, there's, they like it to a telephone wire. If the telephone message or the wire is bent, the message is not gonna get through and that's what is happening. The um, nerve is damaged, mm -hmm. the myelin, the sheath around the nerve is damaged and the message cannot get through. 
and the nerves can get damaged, uh, not physically, not by falling or anything. It's just some kind of it's uh, a disconnection. Auto, auto it's a disconnection. Like yeah. Just and nobody knows how that happens. And right. Like you said, uh, all of a sudden you had tingling or in your hands, like yeah. you're fine, and then wow, what what's going on? Mm -hmm. And then it really doesn't go away, or it, it goes in the uh, refresh repression. Well, you feel like you're hooked remission. up to. You feel my my situation because my body is on a live wire all the time. It feels like I'm on a, a hundred volts, and sometimes it it doesn't end. It just zzz, zzz, you know your whole body is just it's a buzzing, mm -hmm. and I even if nothing's touching you, if I can have a telephone in my pocket and think my phone is going off with a vibration, it's not. It's just part of my body. It's a it's a stinger. It would be like a stinger. Mm -hmm. If you ever, if you've had anybody's ever did a, uh, a, 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 a snake, snake bite. bite, that's what it feels like. It's coming when it comes out. That's what my body feels like all the time. And when your body's at rest, when it's not in motion, it's totally different at the end of the day or in the morning when you're laying in bed. Uh, I don't want to get up. I don't feel like getting up. <laughs> my body feels like there's a ton on me. And, and it's like, no, I don't feel like getting out of bed today. And my body says, uh-uh, this ain't happening. There's days you just don't want to get out of bed. Um, it, it, it never stops. But and you look just You fine. look great. I look great. <laughs> People will say yeah. that. Yes. You look yeah. great. Yeah, but it, it, it's what's in the inner side. You, you, can't, you can't, MS doesn't really represent us. As, mm -hmm. as MS. You can't tell that Lenny and, and Bet ha have MS. No, mm -hmm. you can't. But live in our bodies. Give, I, I would like to change my body with a normal body just, just for 24 hours. I would love to be able to walk like normal and ride a bike and swim. You know, I couldn't do a lot of things with my kids when they were little. You mm -hmm. just, you couldn't. So I missed a lot of things. And, and, and trips, asking about trips, sometimes there's just some trips you would love to do, you just can't. So you do what you can do mm -hmm. um, that make them happy, that make all of us happy. A beach was great. I just got back from yeah, the Dominican. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. I um, saw the pictures. <laughs> yeah. So you know, you, you do what you can. You try not to stress out about things. Stress is a huge thing with MS. Also, um, keeping cool, keeping you know that things don't upset you like others would. Um, you gotta try to keep your cool on some things because stress can really bring out a, a wow, another negative wow. yeah um do men get this as well right but less less, less. three yeah. to one three women to, one. to man oh and and yeah. and that's where you're saying when maybe when you were hormonal? pregnant mm -hmm. hormonal mm -hmm. um you didn't have it yeah. and then it came back mm -hmm. so whatever changes when you're having a, a you're pregnant or a woman that's pregnant something must trigger that mm -hmm. and they haven't been able to figure that and recreate that without yeah. being right. pregnant. Yeah. And I don't know if that was the same with but you. With don't, you. Right. I, it was, I didn't for me find it out was. until after my kids were born. Okay, so, so yes. mine was I mean, before no. kids and yeah. I'll, I will tell you as far as I'm concerned, yes, it has something to do with hormone, hormonal. You know, if, if they could figure something out to make women feel they're pregnant all the time. Yeah, that <laughs> might that might do it. Some really? Says that. My they, wife says that, that is the best great, they've ever felt. But some don't. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's like I said, it's different for every single one of us. And even though there's a, a less instance of men, it seems like the men that I know that have it they have worse. a more severe case, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a more progressive case. Um, and I don't know if that's fact or not, but it just from the people I know. We have a dear friend that was diagnosed at the same time I was, and um, they told him, you know, five years. And so we went to his daughter's wedding, and I said, how are you doing? And he says, well, I lived past my expiration date. <laughs> but he is he's much more disabled than I am. He's at home all the time and, and um, blind. And yeah, because it can affect your eyesight. Yes. Yeah. Um, what about young kids? Or is it developed later uh, when you're more... You're, they usually say between 20 and 50. Mm -hmm. um, the younger ones are 20. I, I was 23 when I got my diagnosis. Um, most people are arranged between 20 and there 50. There have been some 16, 15 year olds though. Um, there were some in high school with my daughter when she was in high school. Um, and didn't they say once a very young child too? Correct. 
I was told at age 50, when I first got it, that it, if you didn't have any new symptoms by age 50, the disease wore itself out, meaning if I hadn't affected my eyes, it probably won't at 50. But they changed <laughs> that. Yeah. Now it's 60, 65. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was told that too, but yeah, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't quite happen. I, because I went, 50, okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but after 50, I declined. So. Well, we, we definitely want to get a cure, and hopefully mm -hmm. it's in our lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, sooner the better. And uh, But this walk uh, has been going on uh, for how many years now? This is our eighth year. Eighth year. And um, each of you uh, have participated in mm -hmm. the walk. Mm -hmm. And Betty, you're uh, raising money. Well, Let's see. I, I, if you go to the website, yes, <laughs> Betty Set Go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, go. can someone then donate money to you or to an individual? Is that how this works? Usually. Usually they start um, with teams. You know someone <coughs> on a team, yep. and the team member or someone doing a team, mm -hmm. a daughter, mm -hmm. a son, or whatever, can start a team for their parent. Yep. Um, a brother, a sister can start a team in support of someone else. It does not have to be the person um, with MS. And saying that, all of us can get out there and walk. It's mm -hmm. not just for MS. That is correct. Anybody, correct. kid, young, mm -hmm. bring a, the stroller if you have Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Kids. And dogs, walk your dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dog. yeah, let's hope uh, April 27th, this cold weather is out of its yeah. system. And let me add that there yeah. is no cost for walking. We would also just like the support. There is no um, cost to come in. If you'd like to make a donation, that would be wonderful. Can they do it right up to the date? Yes, they can mm -hmm. do it that morning. And then you said there's also like a registration table, so they could do that yes, there, right, right before the actual event. That is at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, and uh, you have an hour to do that. And I'm sure people will be there early Saturday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, There'll be, is there anything else that will be there that anybody can get? Uh, well, we have breakfast items. Okay. So if you want rolls, you don't have time for your coffee, oh, you or um, fruit, we have that available also. There will be um, <coughs> vendors there okay. of the various drug companies, okay. yeah. and they will have information there okay. also. So they can help out. How about these shirts? Are you, do you guys just have them, or can, we get a, can anybody get these? Well, this year <laughs> and in past years, for a $100 donation, we do get a shirt. Okay. Everyone with MS mm -hmm. also gets a free shirt okay. as recognition. Is, yeah. is it always orange, or is it? It's usually um, orange. orange. Yes. Does that, that's, that color uh, mean something with MS? It represents MS. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's the color of the orange the, ribbon. Yep. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, you'll have you'll have our braces. I see. Yep. Betty has it. Orange is kind of a representation of a disease. Every disease usually has a color. Yeah. Um, and MS right. is, is orange. MS is orange. Um, and we've had white shirts before. Green. We've had and I think green this shirts. Might be gray. Oh. Gray. Okay. Yes. So it's a representative um, co color. Well, I was talking to Betty when she called me, and and uh, I have a, a very good friend and mentor that developed MS. Okay. And uh, he helped me where I am today in this career and uh, it, it was hard to see him he was a photographer and and for 37 years and, and then been hitting and he couldn't do it anymore I watched him with his wheelchair in the back of his truck and throw it in there and there were times that were harder and now I guess he's in a hospice care sure so um, mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen it and, and can work with the individual for quite a, some time to see how he's gone through it and mm -hmm. It's scary, and, and my mother's had some issues similar to something like that too. There are so many diseases that yeah, mimic it too. Human, that and it's, it's, yeah. it, it just it is very scary. So I appreciate you guys coming on and talking about this. It's really important that that you have to live with this, and mm -hmm. and you want to stay positive in it as well. And we all know that uh, anxiety leads can lead to depression. Mm -hmm. And exactly. Uh, and if if you stay positive, like you all three are. Mm -hmm. Uh, you feel you can live a normal life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that's really what you want to get out to people until there's a, uh, a cure. 
Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people may have taken their lives over something like this, and, and we don't want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. So is there anything la uh, last that you want to say about the April 27th event coming up that I might have missed? Um, just the awareness yeah. part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess we would like those people to come on out and support us and show support for it. Yeah, just coming out is a mm -hmm. very important part. Well, again, I want to thank you guys for stopping by for the, the past hour, and, and I get to learn a little bit more. Uh, maybe in the future, uh, we can get a doctor uh, from one of the from the clinic or one of the area mm -hmm. hospitals to talk about this disease and maybe what what can be uh, done with them, what they're working on. That would be an interesting piece. So maybe later on this year, as as you guys all know, I've only been here about two months. <laughs> oh, wow. job and and uh, I would like to to bring somebody in here in that and and and. and be able to provide that information and then maybe invite you guys back and and when this comes again please let me know every year right around this time that it happens so. well, thank, thank you for your support thank you yeah. thank yeah. you yeah. thanks for the information i want to thank you guys for watching us here on making connections my program that i do monthly if you want to get on the program please call me 715-486-2070 that's my direct line we're going to have a, a line here as soon as we uh, take over most of the public access stations here, it's something that we haven't done yet. It's We're taping this before. So we'll have some new numbers, new website uh, coming up shortly. So if you see this before then, uh, just bear in mind that this will be uh, available. You'll be able to contact myself and David, which is our producer behind the scenes. And we appreciate him doing all the work back there and putting this together later. And, and uh, I, I want to thank him. He's only been here a week and a half, so <laughs> we don't see him, but sometime we'll get him on TV. Again, my name is Tom Lauchs for Making Connections, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.